Ready. I'm going to call the meeting to order of the Sunnyvale 4A Development Corporation Board of Directors regular meeting Wednesday, August the 14th at 5.04 p.m. All members are present and we do have a form. Is that correct because the other one's behind when I say all? Yes. Okay, we're going to move into the public forum and see a no one here to speak in the public forum. I'm going to open and close it and move on to discussion action items. Item number one, discuss, consider, and act upon the regular meeting minutes from July 10th, 2019. No, if y'all are, I mean, I'm happy to, to defer to the treasurer. If Phyllis and I visited the mouth, there was a change in the revenue, budgeted revenue number for the second, made in July for the balance of the year to reflect the other quarter percent that we're getting. And I'm, I'm good with that adjustment. Um, and expenses were normal, nothing out of, out of the usual nature there. So. I have a motion from Mr. Bakiak and a second from Mr. Weeks to approve the July 2019 financial reporting. Reporting the home page, please raise your right hand. I did have one, one item here that I wanted to pass out. We had talked about the incentives that 4A and 4B were doing, and so we were going to make this a part of, however, it didn't get in your packet. Uh, so if you would just take this and just pass one down. It's just a kind of a recap of where you are on your incentives right now. Okay, thank you, okay. We're going to do that. Yes. So this is an related item. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. That's correct. And, and going forward, that's the way that we would like to do it, is to just budget each year for incentives uh, based on what you think the need uh, is going to be each year. But that allows you, that little sheet right there kind of allows you a chance to see what you've agreed to as the year goes by and what of that budgeted balance is still remaining. Now the very top item is the money that was assigned. That was the uh, project next door, the Park Square, I think is what they're calling it. And that is the $187,500 that 4A assigned. We've paid 50% of that out already this year. The other items that are listed in the middle of the page are those incentives that you've agreed upon. Those funds are not assigned, but they would be coming out of that $500,000 that you have budgeted. The sales tax reimbursement is because we decided to like give them sales tax back instead of that sales tax. Right. Can I get questions arisen about Chick-fil-A? What, what mm -hmm. did we do Chick-fil-A? I remember something. Is that, is that a separate 48 for me versus what the town was going to do with the developer? So are you talking about the town did something separate and that was with the developer? The developer. 
Mm -hmm. And we did a separate, again, you know, set to refresh our memory, we did a separate deal with 4D for Chick-fil-A directly. Well, and um, I'm hesitant to, we'll talk about, um, We'll talk about that specific project. There's not an agreement that's been approved, and so I'm hesitant to really say anything about it right now because nothing's been officially approved on what to give them or not. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have anything? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Kelly. Thank you. All. Have a good Thank evening. You too. Okay. Thank you. consider and act upon awarding South Aston reconstruction bid to B and B concrete sawing. Good evening board. Um, so if you'll recall, we had approved for the reconstruction of South Aston Road to be done in an amount not to exceed two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that was approved as well by town council. We, the Public Works has gone out for three quotes, and you have two of the quotes in your packets. The third one was a no bid, and so the recommendation is to go with b, &B Concrete Sawing, Inc., and the total for their project is $211,676. And they've also done work in the town before, so Public Works feels comfortable with them. And they did come in under what was approved, and they were the lowest bid. Not a difference between mm -hmm. We approved up to 250. Okay. Power project, or that's for the demolition of the existing? That is for demolition and complete reconstruction of South Aston Road, which in your packet you have the map showing which area it's talking about. And don't get caught up on the yellow and green lines. It's just that whole entire yellow green area is what's going to be reconstructed. <clears throat> that is okay with B and B? Yes, sir. How much did you say the total was? Two hundred and eleven thousand six hundred and seventy six dollars. Okay, so this thing for elite asphalt is something different? No. no. Is that something different? No, it was another quote. Oh just another quote, got you. <laughs> oh, there's B&B. So, yeah, so we need to <clears throat> approve the contract. That's what we need to do. Or? Approve for awarding the bid, uh, award the bid to B&B. Make a motion that we approve the bid to award the contract to B&B. Second. I have a motion for Mr. Cash and a second for Mr. Bokniak to approve the uh, award-winning bid to B and B as presented. All in favor? Raise your right hand. <coughs> One quick question: Why is that commitment not listed on this statement? It's not an incentive. Okay. But I get your point, and we can add that on there. It is a contingency. So. Yeah. His money was spent. Mm, we can do this because this is an economic. It's in the commercial development. As opposed to residential. Correct, yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, we'll move on to item number four. Discuss, consider, and act upon an amendment to the economic incentive agreement between Hope Development One LLC and the Sunnyville Forty Development Corporation. So on items number four, five, six, and seven. They're, you'll have to do them separately, but just as a whole, all of them are just to amend all the already approved agreements to push the date of their getting the COs back. So for item number four with Hope Development, it is moving the CO from July 31st to December 31st. So that's all the changes that was made in um, the agreements is just moving the CO back to allow for the delay in the weather. Where did I see a 2023 or something? So most of the agreements are for five years. So you'll okay. see a date in the beginning. Okay. Hope Development Partners are the owners of the, the structure next to them. Correct. The, ones that get the developer. Who, uh, who specifically is Sunnyvale Hospitality? Co-create. Okay. And, and Hope Coffee, so 
I would make a motion to. Why did it say four? Staff recommendation in four A. Are you looking at the? Did you pull up the four B or the four A packet? <laughs> I was going to one up earlier, but I lost it. <laughs> I just read the. I didn't say four. No, I'm reading our agenda. No? Yeah. Well, the, the recommendations. The staff recommendations says 4B. Gotcha. Well, we'll make it 4B. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what copy and paste gets you. What? That's what copy and paste oh. gets you. <laughs> The same thing. This pushes it from August 31st to December 31st. And this is co create, you said? Yes, sir. 31st is their anticipated CO date? So they're actually looking at October 25th as a date, but whether depending, so this is just allowing for a couple months leeway for whatever to, were to happen. It doesn't change the amount of time or the length of the agreement. The agreement will still be set at the five years. Well, you'll have to uh, do them separately, but. The same thing with this one. It changes it from September 30th to December 31st. All right, I'll make a motion that we approve the amended economic incentive agreement between Hope Coffee Inc. and the Sunnyvale 4A Development Board. Second. I have a motion for Mr. Cash and a second for Mr. Weeks to approve the amendment to the economic incentive agreement between Hope Coffee Inc. and the Sunnyvale 4 Development Corporation. Item number seven. Discuss, consider, and act upon an amendment to the economic incentive agreement between Bakersburg Inc. and the Sunnyvale Great Development Corporation. And this changes from July 31st to December 31st. Hold it. Is this the Kearney thing? Yes. And he's hoping to be open in the next week or two. Oh. Wait, I'm sorry, when is he planning to be open by? In the next week or two. Make a motion to approve the amendment to the economic incentive agreement between Baker and Ribs and the Sunnyvale for a Development Corporation. Second. I have a motion for Mr. Bachmanoff and a second for Mr. Cash to approve the amendment to the economic right. Sorry, second for Mr. Weeks. <laughs> okay. A motion for Mr. Bachman. Second for Mr. Weeks. <laughs> to approve Don't the amendment around. to the economic <laughs> And this item was on here just uh, there were some questions after the last meeting that I wanted to address uh, some of those questions one was if it were to dissolve how much longer is the board needed the dissolution will not happen until all debts and obligations are paid off it's a little different with the 4a because we have the funds to be able to pay off all of our debts so they'll they'll hold on to the money um, into that account for whatever debt obligations we have incentives our bond bridge payment and I think that's pretty much all of the debt that we have and once they have that, there may be something that we have to do, but they're asking that the board stay on through November to see what happens at that point. Still up in the air on what happens afterwards, um, but if you don't mind staying through at least November, 
and it may be that it's longer than that. And then if you have any other questions. The 10 second summary logic for this, is it because of the three and a half percent cap that is kind of forcing this, forcing the town to consider making one board or is it because other towns do this as well? Um, so the, yes, the short answer is yes. So there's a big consideration of not really knowing where the three and a half percent is going to cap us at. We've got a growing community with a lot of needs and unfortunately we just don't have the funds to be able to do everything that we need to do. So in taking those funds, most of this started with the street maintenance. So with the quarter cent that was going into street maintenance, now that that's not going there, the town does not have dedicated funds or funds period to be able to pay for those streets. So that was when this conversation came about really was that was the start of it. And then in looking at everything that needs to be done with the three and a half percent that came out of that um, census time period, as well as a uh, creation of the police department, it just became a much bigger conversation. I tried to read through all that last time, but I'm not just gonna, I don't guess I understand the politics of it all, how, how monies have to be allocated and that sort of thing, but yeah. So our money will go to the general fund. Should it get passed, yes. I'm wondering how they're going to style that on the referendum. So there is um, the last council meeting or the council meeting before. It has the exact ballot reading. And if you want, I can forward that to you. Um, it's in that water. The water yes. bill? State of Sunnyvale. The newsletter? Newsletter that comes out. It came in my mail yesterday. Oh. I got one of those right here. So it is going to say. doesn't have the ballot wording on here. I don't see it on here. So in November, I guess it's a, uh, I don't know what other elections there'll be. Make sure you turn your mics on. Make sure you turn your mics on when you talk. What's that? Your mic. Make sure the mics are on when you're talking. I do know that if... I think Susan mentioned it last time, that if the if it doesn't pass, 4A is still in existence. So it's written in a way that you can't have one without the other. Um, if it doesn't pass, 4A is still in existence. If it does, then 4A is not, and the funds will go to the general fund. But I'll send that wording to you. I'm not sure if you had an opportunity to visit with Tracy and think about blending the boards. Yeah. something that maybe talk to everybody. It's kind of early to get still, too. Yeah. But it sounds like it's going to be a, it's going to be a. So just an update on a couple of the big ticket items. Downtown committee met to go over the property owner's preliminary master plan and um, still in kind of early stages talks about what will benefit both parties. 
So still really early stages of that. It'll be an ongoing work in progress. The Glacier Master Plan, the Glacier Committee met with the consultant as well as a couple of the people that rent the stalls and the couple that is leasing the property. And we went over the preliminary master plan that was submitted at the joint meeting and kind of made some updates and some changes to it. The consultant will come back to the committee with an updated preliminary master plan, and then it will be brought back to another joint meeting with 4B and the council as well. The rails to trails. Excuse me. Sure. One question. Is that uh, the preliminary master plan, is that in the budget or in the uh, minutes? I can go back and look. Is that the best place to pull that up is in the minutes for that joint meeting? Or Because I can't say that I've read that. Did they, did they go over that preliminary master plan? Was that a published document? They did. Um, I believe it is in the packet, but I know I'm also sending it to 4B so I can send it out to y'all as well. Because okay. there were some that in 4B couldn't attend either and haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think it's still like two. Yeah, it's going to change quite a bit from what is put on there to what you'll see next. Rails to Trails, the 4B has signed and Lumina as well has signed. Both parties have signed a letter of intent to purchase the property. Last night we had a public hearing here. Um, we actually had a kind of a full house. We had probably half the room seemed to be full. Um, people came out and spoke. There's a lot of um, I, people that like the idea of the trail system, but when you get down into the concept and the actual weeds of it, there were a lot of unanswered questions. Like, how's the trail going to go through the gated community of Stony Creek? Is that even a possibility? And if it is, what does that look like? Um, so a lot, uh, most of the people that spoke were in the gated community of Stony Creek. Um, but it's, uh, overall, I think it was pretty positive and we're moving forward. The, we're going back and forth right now with the attorneys on the purchase and sales agreement. That will be brought to the board next month, hopefully. Um, and then we'll move forward with the purchase and sale signature on that um, still working out some maintenance and operation kind of benefit cost analysis so still a lot of work ahead of us uh, where we are our second round of grant proposal is actually the deadline is tomorrow so we're doing the finalizing of all crossing our t's dotting our i's tonight and getting that submitted tomorrow so hopefully we'll know in the next few months if we receive any grant funds from this first round. Uh, oh, the other thing I found that was interesting was I got an email. The executive director for the Friends of Katy Trails actually lives here in Sunnyvale. So um, her and I are supposed to get together and meet and just kind of talk about the Katy Trail and how that works and what they do. And they're 100% funded by the Friends of Katy Trails. They pay for any of the maintenance, they pay for the security officers, it all is 100% funded by them. Um, but they also raise over a million dollars a year to help fund that. So, um, so kind of balancing how we could work that here in Sunnyvale and what we could realistically expect that to look like. QT had their grand opening August 1st and hopefully people are still hearing on the radio station about QT in Sunnyvale. Uh, we had the KSCS radio station out here and did a live feed for a couple of hours. QT was very positive in their response on their grand opening in the first week, saying that we've had, uh, they did not expect to have any, as many people as they've had there. They were understaffed according to what they actually thought. So they're hoping it stays that way, and they're very excited and proud of where they are for the first week. Other than that, that is all I have for that. Questions? Okay, I have number 10 discuss feature agenda item. I do. Pull up my calendar here. 
next Tuesday, the 20th, um, the Sunnyvale Chamber quarterly breakfast will be at Baylor Scott and White from 8 to 9 a.m. Um, they put a building next door to the hospital up on the second floor. Um, on September the 11th, we'll have our quarterly luncheon. And oh, another chamber. The ISD is having their intermediate dedication on this Saturday at 10 a.m. Do they um, get anywhere with their land acquisition? No, they have not. Can you give us an update on Collins Road next time? What you know? Construction. As far as construction should be starting here shortly. Talking no, about this the, north side or the? The north side, yeah. It should start here soon. I know uh, tomorrow Encore will be doing electricity swap outs. Um, so they'll will be out without power here for a little while so that they can transfer the new lines over. You know what they're doing on South Collins utility wise? I know they're relocating the utilities right now. Notice some work. Did it find me? I said it was a fun month of work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably filling up the hole every night. <laughs> There's a pump it out in the morning. Who signed that easement anyway? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's not our property, but you know how it goes. It's going to maintain it. I'd like all the updates, so yeah. It's kind of maybe where we're at on both the North and South Collins Road. What about the problem yet? Yeah. Um, Panda Express or anything like that. Corner. Yeah, south, south East Corner. Yeah, Southeast Corner. Can we talk about that next time? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of concrete on the ground over there. Anything else? If we, if there's any update on Sunnyvale Center other than QT. Movement on the northwest corner as far as their marketing. Pads. They're actively marketing, but yeah, I don't fine. haven't heard of anything concrete. Has that property changed hands, or is it still the northwest corner? The northwest side. So it's still owned by the Henner Brothers, and they're not going to sell it. It's just going to be a. It mm -hmm. They're partnering with a family friend to develop it. Uh, that was. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for the north and east corner too, right? Yes. That's the, that's the Henders too. Same family, yes sir. Someday the downtown committee needs to visit about that property ownership around that creek relative to what the Daniels own. That's it's means landlocked otherwise for the Henders. So but as always if you um, have some future agenda items, just let Tracy know. On. We're going to recess into executive session A section 551.007087 Economic Development to deliberate the offer of a financial other incentive prospect project battalion project PC at five. Sure. Okay, right. Well, because we just got the AC working again. Our AC has not been working and now we have it fixed. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to reconvene into open session, excuse me, at 6.12 p.m. I'd like to make a motion to approve the performance agreement by and between Battalion Casino LLC and Texas Limited Liability Company here in here in Oper and Sunnyvale 4A Development Corporation. Oh, 4A, sorry. 4A Development Corporation as presented. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Mr. Weeks and a second from Mr. Bachniak to approve this perform a performance agreement by and between Italian Cusiana LLC and a Texas Limited Company and the Sunnyvale 4A Development Corporation. All in favor, please raise your hand. Passes unanimously. Okay, and then we will adjourn on 613.